One of the main usages for this concept is when you're adding fractions. For example here, 1 sixth plus 5 eighths. We need to find a common denominator. And the best common denominator we can use is the least common multiple of 6 and 8. Okay. And we already solved it. It was 24. Now we convert the fractions into equivalent fractions. 6 times 4 is 24, so 1 times 4 goes here. And 8 times 3 is 24, so 5 times 3 goes here. And now add 19 over 24. Or in subtraction here, these are unlike fractions, so I have to find a common denominator before I can subtract. And the least common multiple of 9 and 12 was 36. So I'll use 36 as my new denominator. It's actually the least common denominator. The least common multiple of the denominators is the least common denominator. Okay, and here 9 times 4 is 36. 7 times 4 here, 28. 12 times 3, 5 times 3 is 15. And 28 minus 15 is 13 over 36. There is also another method for finding the least common multiple that is especially useful as our numbers get bigger. And while you may not need this method in 6th grade, I still want to show you a few examples, because it is pretty understandable. It uses factoring, the prime factorization of those numbers. So let's say I need to find the least common multiple of 32 and 24, and I don't wish to start making lists of multiples and checking if any of them is a multiple of the other, especially because I don't have memorized the multiplication tables for such big numbers. So instead, I will find the prime factorization of both numbers. 32, I happen to know by heart that its prime factorization is 2 to the fifth power. All this here. Now 24 is pretty easy too. It is 3 times 8. And 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So we get 2 times 2 times 2 and then times 3. And now, to find the least common multiple, we basically need to make a prime factorization here that includes both this and this. Okay? I will have here the prime factorization of our number we are looking for. We are looking for the LCM. And its prime factorization has to include this. And also has to include this. So, since it has to include 2 to the 5th, it has to include that. But then, it has to also include this. So it already has 2 times 2 times 2, and then I have to put the times 3 here, so that here I have the prime factorization of 24, and then this one here would be prime factorization of 32. And so whatever number that is, is the LCM. Okay, it would be the same as 4 times 4 times 6, which is 16 times 6, which is 96. Let's look at another example, again using prime factorization. 45 is 5 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3, so I get 3 times 3 times 5. 81 is 9 times 9, and each 9 is 3 times 3, so I just get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And the LCM, whatever number it is, its prime factorization has to include this and also that. So it has to have all those threes, and then 3 times 3 times 5 has to be there too. 3 times 3 times 5 is here, and then 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is there. Now what does this make? It's basically this much is 81 times 5. It's 81 times 5. So that is 405. And it might have taken me way longer finding the LCM using this method where we list the multiples and check if any of them is a multiple of 81. And especially so when you have even bigger numbers. So this is the preferred method in mathematics for finding the LCM. Okay, I hope this was helpful.